Well, what a privilege it is to share the gospel, to share the Lord's word, and to share the encouragement that Jesus gives us. It's, um, I don't know how many of you are, uh, have the warped sense of humour that I have. Uh, <laughs> I have been watching the news with the subtitles on because it's much more entertaining. <laughs> and I just wanted to mention uh, an item that came up yesterday where there was a lady who was celebrating her hundredth birthday. Mm. She had COVID and she recovered much to everyone's amazement mm. and they celebrated her birthday and uh, there were some lovely comments. One mentioned from the care home manager who said, instead of the elderly, we're looking after the holy, which I thought was wonderful. <laughs> and then uh, something that made me think of our Zoom meetings was that uh, they, instead of saying the family are very desperate to give her a hug, they said that they wanted to have a family honk. And I think we <laughs> Look, there it is on on you. <laughs> Whoever that is. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> so we have got our family hog going. Um, let's come into the Word of God and let's have a look at a very well-known story. We're going to look at the centurion in Matthew chapter eight and from verse five. Now, I'm guessing we know this story quite well, most of us, if not all of us. And um, there is uh, an, another version in Luke 7. And in the version in Luke 7, it is the Jewish elders who approach Jesus until we finally get to the representatives of the centurion. But in Matthew 8, we have... <laughs> The centurion sharing the words that he sent to Jesus. So I'm just wondering if David's going to pop that up in a minute. It looks like it is coming up. He's working on it. <laughs> As usual. Let me start to read it. Um, when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home, paralyzed and in terrible suffering. Jesus said to him, I will go and heal him. The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was astonished, and said to them following, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west, and will take their place at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into darkness, where there'll be a weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, go, it will be done just as you believe it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. Wow. Amen. Fancy meeting Jesus in the flesh. But fancy meeting this man of faith, this centurion. So what does this centurion know and understand? He understands that if he sends out a message to his soldiers, his soldiers will do it. The reason his soldiers will do it will be if they don't do it, they will be punished. But the reason when Jesus speaks, things are done, it's not because of a fear of punishment, it's because of love. So there's a very real difference in that. But Jesus says, as we read in Matthew, without hesitation, it will be done. Let me come, he'll be healed. 
But he says, you don't need to come. All I need to know is that you say yes. So Jesus says yes. Go, he says, it will be done as you believe it would. And his servant was healed at that very hour. It was as he believed it would happen, it happened. He just tells us to pray and believe, believe that we've received, pray and believe that he's there. In fact, the very first thing we are told is, if you want your prayers answered, first of all, you've got to believe that God is real and God is there. And I believe we understand that today. We have Jesus' power. We have Jesus' name. And that gets released in us because he is our saviour and because he's our Lord. You see, it wasn't important that Centurion just knew a system that said, if I ask you, you will send the command. He knew that in his head, but he knew in his heart that Jesus would answer. He knew in his heart that Jesus was able. It wasn't just his head thinking, it was his heart thinking. Now this centurion, he was loved by the Jewish leaders because he had given them a place to worship. He was Join loved. the meeting. He was loved and he was he was blessed. This centurion. And when the leaders said, you know, please do they pleaded with Jesus to do this. And Jesus said, It'll be done. It will be done. And Jesus wants to go to the house, but he stopped going to the house because of the message that the centurion has sent. And that is that you're not worthy, I'm not worthy to have you come into my house. Now, it wasn't right for a Jewish person to go into a Gentile's home. But I believe this is more than that. I believe this is because he recognizes who Jesus is. And he says, I'm not worthy of you coming in to my home. Now, I don't know if Jesus could be knocking at your front door right now, whether you could gladly open it and be happy for everything that Jesus sees as he walks into your house. That you'll be happy for him to sit down and say to you, so what have you been doing this week? What have you been thinking about? What have you done this week? Sounds like quite a challenge to me. I might keep the door locked. But we all know that locking the door doesn't stop Jesus. He just comes in. Amen. Jesus said the time has come. The kingdom of God is near. Repent and believe the good news. Jesus calls us to believe him, to believe everything about him. The beginning is to repent and to ask God to forgive us. When we want our prayers answered, the beginning is to say, praise you, God in heaven. You are wonderful. You are almighty. It was, um, please forgive me, but I timed our Lord's prayer today. This prayer that Jesus gave us to pray takes about 40 seconds. It's not long. You can do it in 30. It does not take long, but it covers everything. And Jesus wants us to pray these prayers and he wants us to pray, and he wants us to ask, and he wants us to believe. Jesus was impressed by the centurion's faith. I was interested in finding out what, you know, references there were on a separate issue. And that is, what is God's heart? What is his heart? So I started looking up for references in the week and I found lots of references to heart, to giving the heart, to following your heart and breaking your, the rules that God has laid down. Uh, there's lots of that in the Old Testament. There's lots of things, but there's no specific thing that says this is God's heart. But when we look through the Bible, we see all of God's heart. And his heart is for us to be redeemed, to be saved. But it's also for us to have a relationship with him to the point that we can come to him on a daily basis and not spend 40 seconds with him in the Lord's Prayer, but to spend time just chatting to him, mm. just giving our day over to him and asking him to help us. Um, I'm taking Tiffany to hospital. 
backs and forwards, collecting her and um, taking her in. And she said the other day, it's a really lovely time that we have together driving from here to West Middlesex. We sit in the car, we worship and we pray. And we place all the bits and pieces into God's hands. All the things of the day, everything that we need. And it's a great time together. We can worship really loudly. And uh, most of the time we were the only car on the road today. So it didn't matter how loud we had the music on with the windows open. <laughs> but we could praise God and give glory to his name. Amen. Yeah. Andy reminded us that God calls us to be the light of the world. We cannot be the light without the sun. We spoke in the week about being attached to the vine. We cannot be separated from God and then expect God to work through us. God sent his son and he sent the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus left us, he said, you know, it's going to be better because the Holy Spirit is coming. The Holy Spirit is going to be with you. Hallelujah. That we Amen. have the Holy Spirit. If you don't feel you've got it, then ask God. Ask God to give you the Spirit. If you don't feel you've got enough of the Spirit, ask God. And whoever asks God, Jesus says, how much more of the Spirit will they be given? Come on, people, let's get going. Let's get praying. Let's get asking God for more Spirit. Because as we do that, imagine how mighty we will be in Jesus and for Jesus. God is going to give us more love. He's going to give us more love for the things that he loves. He's going to give us more strength. He's going to give us more wisdom, wisdom for living on a daily basis. And he's going to give us a greater understanding of his love for other people when we draw near to him and we ask for more of his spirit. Do you know something? God isn't concerned about being overwhelmed with requests and people asking for things. He's more concerned that we don't ask. And I just want to quote um, my favorite chapter in the Bible, uh, Mark 9, and from verse 19, Jesus says, oh, you unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? And I find that a massive challenge. You know, I don't want Jesus to be fed up with me. And then he goes on to say, chapter 9 verse 23 when he's asked can you do this he says if i can jesus said everything is possible for him who believes look at the centurion he believed that god could heal his servant didn't even need jesus to go to his house he knew that he could heal his servant if jesus said let it be so then it will be so and finally, I just want to say this. We live in a world that is not our world. Mm. It is Satan's world. And he is the enemy of God's people. And he loves to set traps and set snares. When Jesus walked the earth, he healed the sick. He delivered those that were held in the devil's snares. And he still does the same thing today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe at this time you're being held back by sickness, fear, discouragement, a feeling of being unworthy, the knowledge in your heart and mind that you're sinning against God and you're hurting him. Maybe there are spiritual strongholds in your life, things that are stopping your freedom in Jesus Christ. I just want to give you a couple of scriptures. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him that is Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, that is Jesus, and by the word of testimony. And the testimony is Jesus is Lord. Mm -hmm. Don't just have him in your head. Have him in your heart. Let him be your Lord. Don't get all puffed up with your own arrogance as well as God moves and blesses you in his spirit. I just want to read. Sorry, David, I've moved on. I just want to read <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verses 18 to 20. Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. 
nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. You see, that's where we rejoice, that we belong to Jesus, that we are a child of God. That is our place of rejoicing. Most of you know the story when we moved into our house that a medium had lived here and over a period of time, God started to reveal things to us. And um, one of those things was that a medium had been here and been in one of the bedrooms here. Hallelujah, this house totally belongs to Jesus now. Mm. Amen. 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 But we had spirits in the house and that was the scripture that Jesus led me to. He saw Satan fall like night. He's given us authority. But in the fact that we belong to Jesus, we belong to Jesus is the place of rejoicing and the place of blessing. So whatever is holding you today, Jesus has overcome it. Whatever you feel might be trapping you, snaring you, Jesus has overcome the enemy on the cross. And by his blood, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. And we say hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Don't, be afraid. Don't be afraid of anything that is a spiritual battle, because Jesus is the Lord over these spiritual battles. Amen. Amen. We know it is a fight. We know that it is truly a battle. And in this battle, we have the victory in Jesus Christ alone. He is the victor over sin, over death, over sickness. And he used to walk around delivering people from the enemy and from spirits. So if you've got one today, he's not going to be enjoying this word because he knows that he is under the threat of Jesus Christ. And Jesus will set us free. What do we need to do? Have that faith that the centurion had. Believe as we ask. Believe as we pray. There's many other scriptures guiding us and pointing us in direction. You know, let people pray for you. Let people... Um, intercede for you but our one true place of blessing is at the foot of the cross and with Jesus can we pray mm. Heaven, for, Heavenly Father we pray that if there's anything that is binding us today we give it to you in the name of Jesus and we call upon the name of Jesus in faith to step into our situation to step into this spiritual warfare and give us the victory. To no longer be held down by the enemy, whether we have depression or physical sickness, mental sickness, anything that might draw us away from Jesus. We just place that into the hands of our loving Saviour and say, Lord, take it from us and be merciful. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you gave us an authority and that authority is in the name of Jesus. But it's not just the name, it's Jesus in our heart. And I pray today, Almighty God, my personal prayer is that everyone listening or even listening in the future to this word, will have an open heart to you and say, come in. Make your home in me. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 We sung a song earlier.